If you want to dictate fights with your strong, focused damage on Zenyatta, you've come to the right place. So let's get right into it. Zenyatta, regarded as the most deadly support Overwatch has to offer, is extremely impactful within every teamfight. Equipped with his Orbs of Destruction, Harmony, and Discord, he can not only supply the team with convenient healing, but insane damage as well. With this incredibly strong damage, Zenyatta has the ability to decimate teams before they even engage. Thus, with great power comes a great deal of care, skill, and responsibility. That being said, what is this guide going to have that is different than something you'd find somewhere else? This is indeed a comprehensive guide, so there are many different players from all over that will end up watching this video in the future. So I'm going to go really in depth in this character. Many guides go into detail about how Zenyatta fits within Ladder, which is perfectly reasonable. However, within this video we will not only accomplish this, but also go in depth about how Zenyatta fits into a scrim setting. In order to do this, allow me to introduce myself to you. My name is Paz, and I am a top 500 flex support player. I recently played for the team attack mode that plays third in the open division that took place in February of 2021. To put that into perspective, we were a game off of making contenders trials, which is a little heartbreaking. I have accumulated many hours on this character not only in ladder, but in professional scrims as well. And while many people know me for my Ana playstyle, Zenyatta is a serious runner-up in my arsenal. So let me lay out the basic roadmap for this video. Throughout the guide, we will go over all the concepts I have listed in the description in a staircase structure. For instance, with Zenyatta's Orbs of Destruction, we will start with the basics and work our way up to the advanced concepts like understanding when to use your primary fire, your secondary fire, and shot prioritization. However, before we get into the guide, 93.1% of my viewers are not subscribed. These videos do take a ton of time and I would greatly appreciate it if you would do so. But with that out of the way, let's start with Zenyatta's primary weapon, the Orbs of Destruction. Zenyatta's Orbs of Destruction contain 20 orbs before he has to reload. Each orb does 48 damage on a body shot and headshot multipliers are relevant as well. It is important to keep in mind that he does not suffer from damage fall off at all, so playing far back is optimal. However, since the Orbs of Destruction are projectiles, it can be hard to aim at said longer ranges, but with extensive practice, these projectiles will feel natural. To elaborate on this, because of your orbs and their speeds, you may need to aim ahead of your target depending on the range. To practice this, I recommend loading into death matches and taking fights from various different ranges. While in the past I may suggest aim arena, you will find that you are really close to your targets and there isn't a great amount of variation in the distances. Because of this, a healthy regimen could include a warm up of aim arena for 10 to 15 minutes on Zen and then moving on to tryhard FFA. Codes for these lobbies will be found in the description. Zenyatta's Orbs of Destruction have two different firing modes. His primary fire is a single shot that can be fired two and a half times a second, while his secondary fire is a volley of orbs that can be charged for up to five orbs at a time. It is important to keep in mind that each orb takes about half a second to charge while using Zenyatta's secondary fire, and that you can also release the volley early to swiftly take down your opponents. Your primary fire should be used to chunk down shields or to spam an angle during a fight, while your secondary fire should be used in more specific situations, like when your Arisa pulls, you are rounding a corner, or when you are in a 1v1 with a Tracer or a Genji, specifically after the Tracer recalls and the Genji uses Deflect. Keep in mind that Genjis now have the ability to take down Deflect early. This can be dangerous as you won't be able to charge a full volley in time to swiftly take him down. If you do see a Genji continuously doing this, be sure to adapt to take him down efficiently. It is really important that you do not fall into the trap of not being confident with your aim. I find that with aim, your mindset is half the battle. Take your time to really learn the projectile speed that Zenyatta's orbs of destruction have in both his primary and his secondary fire. You do not need to be super close in order to hit your shots, and it is more important that you stay alive in the back missing than dying up close trying to get a pick. But we will get into this concept more a bit later. Out of all of the flex supports, Zenyatta has the hardest weapon to learn. Because of this, and the fact that his value is mechanically intensive, it is extremely important that you develop good training habits and feel confident in your ability. Personally, Aim Arena and Tryhard FFA are my go-to tools to practice within Overwatch. 
Kovax is another option, but effectively using that is difficult in a whole different topic. If you guys are interested in seeing a video about Kovax and other aim trainers, just let me know down in the comments below. Let's now move on to Zenyatta's first ability, the Orb of Harmony. The Orb of Harmony is a single target heal that heals for 30 health a second. Because of this, it is extremely efficient at healing squishy characters like Tracer and Genji, and less efficient at healing beefy tanks, but we will get into this concept soon. In order to latch the orb onto a teammate, you must be within line of sight of your teammate. That being said, the Orb of Harmony stays attached to teammates forever while they are within your line of sight. However, if they remain outside of your line of sight, the orb will only remain attached for 3 seconds. Keep this in mind while you orb a tracer and ball when playing various kinds of compositions. A big mistake I see a lot of people make is to simply forget to keep their orb up at all times. While orb placement is important, it is even more important for players practicing Zenyatta to first get into the habit of keeping your orb on somebody at all times. Look back at some VODs of your Zenyatta play. For most people watching this video, you'll be astonished at how often your orb isn't on a teammate. I know because I used to make this mistake quite frequently before I fixed it. Again, a lot of mistakes you are making are those that you don't even realize you are making, so hopefully this helps. Moving forward, it is important to take a moment before every game starts to look at the composition you are playing and understand which characters will really need your Orb of Harmony. This all comes down to win conditions, which we will focus more specifically on after we are done reviewing Zenyatta's basic kit. Let's first look at a spam dive hybrid composition, including Ball, Sigma, Ash, Echo, Zenyatta, and Mercy to understand this concept better. It is important to note that the ball is mainly going to be making the space for the team to rotate to a strong position. Thus, he will be taking most of, if not all of the damage during the start of the team fight. While orbing the echo might be the most efficient, orbing the ball is the most effective because he is the one taking the damage. This allows him to be more aggressive on his engagement, allowing for more time to get the maximum value. This also allows for your Mercy to focus on damage boosting the Ash and Echo to kill the enemy before they even get into your backline. For what Zenyatta lacks in healing, he makes up for it in damage, and damage is healing. The Orb of Discord is a single target debuff effect that can be applied to an enemy, causing an increase to incoming damage by 25%. Because of this, it is extremely effective at melting tanks, which will ultimately cause enemies to be less aggressive at higher levels of play. Much like the Orb of Harmony, in order to latch this onto an enemy, you must be within the line of sight of your target. However, if a target is behind a shield, it will block your ability to attach Discord to the target. That being said, the Orb of Discord stays attached to enemies forever while they are within your line of sight. However, if they remain outside of your LOS, the Orb will only remain attached for 3 seconds. Much like your Orb of Harmony, it is important to get your Discord out as much as possible. When you are starting out, it is important to just get into the habit of looking to Discord until it is second nature. As you get better, try to use your Discord to prioritize tanks or other targets that are out of position or that are dueling one of your teammates. Make sure that you do not fall into the habit of only Discording who you are looking at though, as this can be detrimental to your team if it is a different target than what everyone else is focusing on. Keep in mind that while a target is discorded, you can see them behind cover. This can be incredibly helpful when 1v1ing an enemy zen or when attempting to track a flanking DPS in dive matchups. This can help you get the jump on an unexpected flanker, which will help you turn the tide of battle. This is an extremely underutilized technique I find when reviewing Zenyatta VODs. It is also smart to get into the habit of discording quickly while taking 1v1s to maximize your chances of winning while taking fights by yourself. Don't fall into the trap of tunnel visioning either though, as this will force you to lose even more value. In each game, feel out the lobby and see if your main tank is trying to call shots or if they are quiet. If they are quiet, take this opportunity to carry the game and be forceful with your discord targets. If your main tank is much louder however, it is okay to take a step back every now and then. Don't get too quiet though, because you are Zenyatta and you can see a lot more than your tanks oftentimes. Thus, if you see someone out of position or see a glaringly obvious mistake you can aggress on, don't be afraid to take over the comms and say something. With different teams come different styles, so make sure you are adaptable and ready to get the most out of every single situation. 
Zenyatta's ultimate is a powerful ability that creates a healing radius around you to keep your team alive and kicking through tons of damage. The 10 meter radius heals for 300 a second. Note that the duration lasts 6 seconds, the perfect amount of time to counter a graviton surge or a nanoblade. The ability also makes Zenyatta himself immune to all damage, but he is still susceptible to knockback, so keep that in mind when using the ultimate near ledges or cliffs. It is also important to note that while in the ultimate, you move at an incredibly fast 11 meters per second. Having insane mobility means that you can get more out of every transcendence. The general pace that you want to be looking for is to use your transcendence close to your team, heal for 4 to 5 seconds, and then use the last 1 to 2 seconds to get back into position to continue getting value. Speaking of value, it is important that you get your orbs on targets before you use transcendence when you can. Obviously, getting a discord on a target is much more important than a harmony when using your ultimate in a pinch. For example, if the enemy Genji dashes up to Nanoblade, use this time to discord him, then trans when he's about to dash into your team. Make sure not to tunnel vision on this concept though. If you get caught off guard and don't have time or have an angle to find a discord target, use the transcendence and keep your team alive. You also have to be aware of the possibility of the Genji dashing up and not blading in order to force out your transcendence. While it doesn't happen often, it is something to look out for and keep in the back of your mind. Lastly, it is important to understand that transcendence is not an engagement ultimate. Using transcendence to walk through a choke is not an optimal play, as you lose 2 seconds worth of your ultimate when your team isn't taking damage. Instead, you should look to use your ultimate when your team is critical. This creates for the enemy to think that they have already won the fight and that they have entered the cleanup phase. Then you can trans and turn the pace of the fight immediately, pushing through with an extra 4 seconds of borderline immortality. When using this technique, I generally refer to it as the Uno Reverse technique as I feel as though it has the same energy and meaning as the memes. Understand that some characters can kill through transcendence. The ones you want to note the most are Hanzo, Widow, and Ana if she antis your team. Obviously, there isn't a whole lot that you specifically can do to block a nade, but you can use this information to avoid making mistakes in the future. Now that we have finished up Zenyatta's kit, let's talk about how he fits into compositions to create strong win conditions. A win condition is a way in which a team can win a team fight. Obviously, there are many different possible win conditions for each and every teamfight, but there are some that are more effective and efficient than others. That is, there are ways to win a fight by using a minimal amount of ultimates to get the maximum value needed. So, let's talk about how Zenyatta fits into various compositions, powerful win conditions within the compositions themselves, and how the win conditions interact with different comps. The first composition we will go over is a simple Zenyatta spam comp. This composition includes Arisa, Sigma, Mei, Hanzo, Baptiste, and Zenyatta. This comp wants to play slow and take a strong off angle with the Sigma and Hanzo along with you on the Zenyatta possibly for more damage. This makes the enemy team forced to make a decision quickly because if they don't, they will crumble to the damage provided by the off angle. This is your basic win condition. Other strong combos include Pull Dragon, Pull Freeze, Pull Window, Pull Sigma Alt, and the list goes on. If you watched my previous Baptiste guide, you were probably familiar with this composition, but let's look through it in the lens of the Zenyatta player. Your goal here is to deal as much damage as possible. Most of this will be found in targeting shields, but you can also discord stragglers to find a swift pick on the off angle as well. Zen works well in this composition due to what the team is trying to accomplish, and the fact that Baptiste makes up for the lack of healing in poke wars where shields are broken. The next composition we will cover is the Spam Dive Hybrid composition that we discussed earlier. This composition includes Wrecking Ball, Sigma, Echo, Ash, Mercy, and Zen. This composition wants to have the Wrecking Ball make space and create time for the Sigma, Zenyatta, and Ash to rotate into an optimal position to overwhelm the enemy with damage from multiple angles. That is their basic win condition. While there may not be crazy ultimate synergies, each ultimate stands as a threat on their own. As Zenyatta in this composition, your goal is to heal the ball in his engagement and rotate into a position that grants you the greatest line of sight in the fight to deal the most damage. 
make sure that when playing in compositions like this, that you play with your Sigma to take powerful off angles and destroy your opponents. Now let's talk about how these compositions interact against each other for Zenyatta. While playing Zenyatta within these two comps, your overall playstyle doesn't really change much. You are still trying to play for tons of damage within optimal sight lines as much as possible, normally while playing with your Sigma. However, your orb placement does change quite a bit, specifically in your harmony orbs. With the Arisa spam comp, your goal is to harmony orb your off angle when they want to be aggressive and to play in a position where you won't get caught out by the enemy ball. Discording the wrecking ball on his engagement can also force him to have to get his value quickly before he dies. Spamming the enemy down before they can get their value is the name of the game for spam, so help your team do that easily with consistent damage and optimal positioning. With the ball comp, your goal is to harmony orb your ball on his engagement and rotate it to a DPS when they once become more aggressive, after the ball does what they need to do. This not only allows for your ball to get into space easier, but it also provides you as the Zenyatta ample ultimate charge. After you then rotate and find an optimal position to fight, you have tons of options. You can kill any stragglers, pressure the off angle, or focus the Orisa and the frontline. Hybrid comps are extremely complicated. Thus, you need to keep giving your team options, which is possible on Zen with consistent damage and clean, solid rotations. Before I close this segment, I want to add one more composition. Take the hybrid composition we used previously, while also looking at this new composition that is rather popular. This composition contains a Wrecking Ball, D.Va, Tracer, Echo, Zenyatta, and Brigitta. The new composition plays much like a normal dive composition, with the orb starting on the ball engagement or on the Echo if she chooses to engage with the ball, but that is besides the point. There is a common theme between these two comps that have created some of the most dominant metas in the history of Overwatch. Do you see it? The answer is tons of damage that makes up for the general lack of healing. While Briggs Inspire is underrated and does create a lot of healing for the team, her main role is to keep the Zen alive so the Echo with Discord can do the rest. Mercy creates consistent healing with nice mobility, but damage boost created one-shot potential for Ash back in the day. Zenyatta revolves fundamentally around the idea of damage is healing. I've said it time and time again on the channel, but this is where it applies the most. If you were OG enough to remember the Zenyatta Lucio metas, these only worked due to the fact that you really don't need a heal if you can just kill faster anyways. While this concept seems great on paper, it is much more difficult to pull off than standard compositions with healthy amounts of healing, as you need to be extremely precise and efficient with your damage across the team. But that is what makes Zenyatta such a beautiful character. He is a support that is best utilized with precise strategy and gunplay. If you are still confused on this subject, let me know in the comments down below if you'd like me to make a video about it. If you have any questions, you can also join our Discord server of many players just like you and ask me questions while I'm not live. Link in the description. Now that we have discussed win conditions, let's talk about positioning. Positioning with Zenyatta is different within every single game you play, but there is always one thing you have to worry about, and that is the fact that Zenyatta is a bit of a glass cannon. Much like honest positioning, you want to stay away from the fight as much as possible, but you don't want to stand so far out that your line of sight gets blocked or worse, you die easily to a flanker in the back line. So it is important in short to be in a position as Zenyatta that is safe but also aggressive. With Sigma compositions, you do this well with Sigma and his shield. It was far more effective back in the day, but the idea still exists. With dive matchups, the space created by the ball must be utilized to rotate quickly to complete the win condition of the composition. Lastly, while playing with a Brigitta, you can take this space much more effectively since you have such a powerful duo. With this duo, it is much more intimidating to push you, which will help you survive much easier. While I could go into rotations for various maps on this subject, it is something that you really have to figure out on your own through experience. The big takeaway for positioning is that it is more important that you prioritize your life, but at as little cost to value as possible. Make sure that you are confident in your abilities to aim at longer ranges so that you don't force yourself into close range duels when you don't have to. Zenyatta's kit is basic to understand, but in practice it is much more difficult than it looks. To finish off the guide, where are you going to see Zenyatta in high level team play? 
As stated previously, Zenyatta has proven himself to be an extremely flexible hero and has been played all the way from spam, goats, and dive. Recently, however, he has been found with Brig in dive compositions, but that doesn't mean we won't see him paired with Baptiste in the near future. It is really hard to figure out what may come next as he is so versatile. Characters I suggest duoing with in ladder the most include Wrecking Ball, Sigma, Tracer, and even supports like Baptiste, Mercy, and Brig. Duoing with a Wrecking Ball can allow for lots of space to be had for Zenyatta. Sigma can create deadly off angles when played correctly as well. Tracer and arguably other flankers can tear targets incredibly quickly with precise discords. Lastly, dependent on the meta, support duos can be extremely dominant as the damage you can put out is rather crazy in metas with Zenyatta paired with a Mercy or Baptiste. Brig is also such a strong character to allow the Zenyatta insane survivability to push out even more value with damage, but with each character comes their correct and incorrect situations to play them in. So, make sure to always think about your composition's win condition in order to pick the best fit for every single game. And with that, the guide comes to an end, but let's finish it all off with some key takeaways. For beginners, learn how Zenyatta's kit works including projectile speeds and make sure to get into the habit of keeping your orbs on teammates and enemies as much as possible. For intermediate players, start understanding how Zenyatta fits into every composition you are playing and where you should place yourself or rotate to to win the fight. Set yourself up to play at your best and create crazy damage. Make sure to practice your aim to feel confident firing at longer range, but don't make them too hard to hit either. Lastly, for advanced players, find ways to min-max your damage and healing potential in rotation. Also, push your limits and find when you can charge a right-click around corners to find solid burst damage on a tank or pick off a DPS. Squeeze out your transcendences as well to get the full effect out of every one of your Uno Reverse tactics. Zenyatta is the manifestation of the concept that damage is healing, and don't be afraid to use this aggressively once you are confident enough to do so. And with that, you have officially completed the Paz Certified Zenyatta Guide. Practice makes perfect in learning every hero within Overwatch. Be sure to watch Zenyatta players to apply things that you have learned throughout the guide today. These players include Fran, Jonak, myself, and others within the community. If you are interested in seeing me live, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 4pm EST. I also just started coaching over at Fiverr for $10 an hour. Satisfaction or your money back. Link in the description. If you have learned anything from this guide, please do like, share, and subscribe as it helps the channel out a ton. But until next time guys, I've got a peace out and paz out. I'll see you in the next one.